Hello, everyone, and welcome to this 70th episode of Friday Fruit Clips. I am very grateful that you would take some time out of your busy day to stop by and check things out. Now, Friday Fruit Clips, of course, is my award-winning, critically acclaimed, and cutting-edge weekly YouTube series where I expose the false prophets, the false teachers, those who would corrupt the Word of God for their own personal gain. But don't let the fact that we've won so many awards affect you. It's just the way it is. We're very happy about that. Now, because you're here, why don't you go ahead and take a quick second and click that subscribe button. Just be done with it. You know you want to. It is required, but once you do click it, you will experience tingly joy, or so I've been told. All right, let's go ahead and show our banner scripture, Ephesians 5.11, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. That means expose, and that's what we're going to do here today. Now, real quick, as you're viewing these clips, you might find yourself chuckling a little bit, you know, kind of laughing, and I want you to know that, well, this is okay. Sometimes you've got to laugh at these charlatans because they are just that ridiculous. So, if you're ready, go ahead and plant your behind down on your favorite chair, get comfortable, grab some Cracker Jack, and let's go ahead and kick the door open on this episode. You ready? All right, let's do it. All right, so first up, we're taking a look at, well, look, it's Apostle Jonathan Ferguson and his wife, who apparently is a prophet. We're going to focus just on Jonathan Ferguson. Now, perhaps some of you haven't heard of this guy. Several other uh, channels have done some really good exposed videos on him. So if you care to learn more about him, certainly come and check out these videos. But today we're going to focus on two clips where Apostle Jonathan Ferguson, I'm guessing, obviously, he's also a prophet because uh, these are prophecies that he's going to try to claim. Just some ridiculous clips. So let's go ahead and roll that first one. That's going to be the sign. You're going to see fouls uncovered. You're going to see people exposed. God said it won't be swept under the rug. They swept that under the rug, but Epstein was killed in prison. Things that people said was conspiracy and things that people said was made up. There are things and fouls with proof and receipts. Things that Bill Gates was involved in. God said, I'm about to uncover the foul. Daily Mail released a cache of documents today exposing the extent of Jeffrey Epstein's close connections with celebrities and elites. All right, guys, I've seen some ridiculous things within the social media profit world, but this has to be right up there at the top. This man who allegedly made this prophecy on August 11th, 2023, is actually trying to take credit for the furthering, I guess, of the exposing of Jeffrey Epstein. And sadly, it works. People are so gullible. They just believe anything. My goodness, talk about prophesying after the fact. Jeffrey Epstein has been unalived since 2019. And of course, many, many, many people have anticipated more, I guess, information coming out, coming out. So is it really a stretch for one of these social media prophets like Jonathan Ferguson to come out and say, oh, the Lord says more is going to be exposed? It's just so ridiculous. But again, sadly, it works. All right, so there's your first clip. Let's listen to Jonathan's second clip. Maybe it'll get better. I don't know. Go ahead and roll it. Justice will be served. Those who have mishandled children, one by one, these prayers are starting a decade of exposure. Now watch what happens over the next three months. Now watch what happens over the next three months. And Diddy is not the only one. Watch, it's been two or three years of pulling these covers back. I see people in high places just falling, falling like flies. They think they have authority. They think they make the rule. They think they set the law. But the hand of God and the arm of the Lord that we have prayed tonight shall be seen. All right, so there's a couple of things that are worth pointing out. 
Note the article that Jonathan Ferguson chose to end the video with right here. Here's the headline, CBS News. Note the date, September 18th, 2024. Do you know that's well beyond the initial three months that Jonathan prophesied? Watch what happens in the next three months. Well, this is beyond that, so already it's a false prophecy, but it's also ridiculous because Diddy's home, two of his homes were actually raided back on March 25th of this year. So this, of course, would have been fresh on the mind of the prophet or apostle Jonathan Ferguson, who came out again after the fact and then made his prophecy that more was going to be exposed, more was going to be exposed. Isn't it just ridiculous, folks? It's always after the news breaks that these prophets come out with these fake prophecies. Now, the last thing I want to say before I conclude this segment is, do you think that this is important? Do you think that God really wants us to know through prophecy about Jeffrey Epstein and Diddy? It has nothing to do with the gospel of Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with the salvation of souls. This is mocking Jesus and what he did at the cross. So we're going to end this one right now. Certainly mark this man and avoid him. It's ridiculous. Let's move on. All right, so next up, we've got two of the greatest false prophets of the end times, period. COVID-19! COVID-19! I'm not even kidding. Blasphemy, I believe, was redefined after the long careers of these two con artists. In this segment, Jesse Duplantis is going to say a prayer over Kenneth Copeland. And folks, this, this is just all theater. And you, this is one of those where you may actually find yourself laughing as they try to come off as being holy men of God, but it just falls flat. So let's watch this short clip and we will comment on the other side. Go ahead and roll it. Father, I thank you for Brother Copeland. From the top of his head to the soles of his feet, because he lives, eat, and breathes this, him and Gloria. And Lord, he's built this network through your glorious grace. Give him great strength and healing in his body Thank you. from the top of his head to the soles of his feet and all his partners, God, because his partners are more than just people. It's his extended family. Father, I thank you for him. I release that anointing of God today on him. And Lord, that many more, many more years of strength will be given to him as he preaches this glorious gospel. It. Many more, Lord. Let him see the coming of the it, Lord, Lord. All of us. It, it would you, be a Jesus. wonderful time. I thank you for this man. Thank I you. Thank you, Lord, Jesus. that you used him. He is our prophet for today. Oh, no. He is our Jeremiah. He is our Ezekiel. He is what, that, what, what those people were back then. Brother Copeland is, is that today for this generation. <laughs> 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 Lord, I thank you for it. Thank you. I believe you for it. Thank you. I call it done. All right, honestly, this is just comedy at this point. This is comic relief. Sadly, so many members of Copeland's congregation actually think that this is true, that he's some sort of a biblical-like prophet. But trust me, fellas, Copeland is the exact opposite of what a holy biblical prophet is. It's going to be a very terrifying judgment day for Kenneth Copeland, lest he repent, and also for Jesse Duplantis. These are two of the worst I've ever seen in our time. And so there you go. Very interesting. Let's go ahead and wrap up this segment and move on to the next one. All right, so next up we've got well, we've got this guy. Who is he? Well, why don't we just let him introduce himself? Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm Dr. Thomas Smith on the fourth, and I have a prophetic word that's so strong. Dr. Thomas Manton III. <laughs> yep, he's a prophet. He lives in Africa, and he's a clown. I'm not kidding, folks. If there was any prophet out there that more resembled a clown than this guy and also performed as a clown, uh, I'd be surprised. Dr. Thomas Manton just... Here's the other part, too. If he wasn't hurting people over there, he would be comedy gold. But the fact always remains that this man is absolutely deceiving people. 
fleecing the flock, preaching a false gospel, and of course he's a false prophet. Now I've actually featured him once before on Friday Fruit Clips, and we're going to listen to a couple of clips as he desecrates the gospel. We're going to look at, well, take a look at the title of, take a, just take a look at the title of this video, The Rise of the Billionaires. Apparently this is a prophecy he says is from God. And so keep that in mind as we go through his so-called prophecy teaching. And with that, go ahead and roll that first clip. Begin to speak about knowing the exact plan for your life is number one. And then a lot of how-tos. And I don't want to recap the message. You'll get to see it for yourself. And then... In the afternoon in the meeting in the city, the power of God, the glory cloud covered the place. The glory. And I began to prophesy on a very high level. And that's the subject of tonight's message here. I want to call this prophecy colon dot dot, you know, space, the rise of the billionaires, of which I am one. And there he is. He's got a new prophecy from God, Thomas says. It's the rise of the billionaires. And he is, of course, a billionaire, or so he says. Now, stating the obvious here, this is completely unscriptural. And of course, if you are at all discerning, he's more than likely doing this fake prophecy to set up his followers to, you know, get ready to sow a seed, to plant a seed. Why? Well, because you ain't going to be a millionaire, billionaire for free, right? You're going to have to sow into his ministry to hit that billionaire status. And sadly, it works. Uh, this man preys on the material desires of his gullible congregation. Look at him. Just check him out. Uh, but here you go. Thomas is not done. Let's go ahead and roll that next clip. And the Lord spoke to me. The Lord spoke to me. Believe that there is a curse. They're like minty, menthol-y things, and I think they're making me worse than better. All right, so the, the Lord spoke to me, and I'm sitting with these illustrious, high-level people who are very wealthy and very, you know, well-to-do. Hi, I'm Fabio. Serious in the game of life and the, the realms of business and prosperity and people walking in abundance, you know. And and I want to tell you a key before I say the, the punchline of the title of the message here, that a prophecy that the Lord spoke. If you stick around with people that are on the low level of things, you're never going to have a reference point on how to climb higher. If you're in a certain realm or limitation or sphere of influence of to a limited degree, you have to climb up out and go into the realm of a higher uh, conglomeration of relationships that you'll get rubbed off on by the brilliance and excellence that people are walking in. You don't want to stay with, uh, you, you stick around with poor people, you, they're never going to help you get rich. Uh, you, you, you stick around with poor people, you, they're never going to help you get rich. All right, this man is atrocious. Now, once you stop laughing at the absolute absurdity of what he just said, as he pretends to be a man of God, Please remember to pray for those all over Africa who may find themselves sitting before this man learning this garbage, which is completely unbiblical. He is antithetical to what the gospel teaches. He's a spiritual criminal. Imagine telling anyone who's listening to pretty much not hang around with the poor. It's, it's really shocking. What did Jesus say about the poor? In the book of Luke, chapter 6, go to verse 20. Here Jesus says, He lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Imagine that, this man, Thomas Manton, telling you not to hang around with poor people. Wow. Again in Luke, chapter 14, let's start in verse 12. Then said he also to him that bade him, 
When thou makest a dinner or a supper, call not thy friends, nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen, nor thy, what, rich neighbors, lest they also bid thee again, and a recompense be made thee. Look at verse 13. But when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind. This man, Thomas Manton, is actually teaching his people to do the opposite of what Jesus taught. Again, Luke, let's go back to chapter 4. Come down to verse, well, let's go to uh, verse 18. Jesus actually quoting from the book of Isaiah, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Boy, oh boy. And there are so many more verses I could show you. But sadly, we have one more clip to look at with Thomas Manton here. And you think it's going to get better? It's not, folks. Get ready for this next one. I think that people should be told and warned about, hey, your brother, the rich man who had Lazarus as his measly servant, you know, who was abused and down under the table, a slave, a servant, he ended up in the good place. But your brother, uh, this man that you looked up to, the rich man, he ended up in the flames of torment. So please warn other people not to go where he's gone. But we, we could call this man a member of the, the round table, the high table. And Lazarus was like the guy who was under the table. Well, in eternity, it was better for Lazarus to end up where he ended up. And some people like uh, marginalized wealth and wealth creation and the fact of being rich and all that. Because they say, well, look what happened to the rich man and look what happened to the poor man. The poor man ended up saved. The rich man ended up damned. However, the poor man could do nothing to advance the order of God in the earth except to get saved himself, which to me is pitiful. Does that not just simply put you at a loss for words? what this man said, teaching his followers not to marginalize the rich guy. And as far as the poor guy, Lazarus, well, he was pitiful. That's right. The salvation of Lazarus, Thomas Manton said, is pitiful. It's just, I keep coming up with the same adjectives, so I'm just not going to say them. But this is what's out there, friends. This did not creep into the church it stormed in and these types of teachings are now thriving thomas manton is a satanic butcher he is doing the work of satan degrading holy scripture and teaching for doctrines of devils he exalts wealth and he downgrades the teachings and the words of jesus christ certainly pray for this man that he would repent. But for now, I'm going to close down this segment. I'm physically ill. This is one of those segments that made me physically ill. This man is just terrible. And so with that, mark Thomas Manton and avoid him and tell everybody that you can to avoid him. He is not of God. Let's move on. All right, next up we've got, well, it's Catherine Crick, ladies and gentlemen. <gasps> Yeah, Catherine. Catherine, of course, one of the most laughably absurd imposters on the circuit today. And Catherine, I'm stating the obvious here, uh, she is embarrassingly cringe to the most spectacular level. It's really quite something. But she's moving up uh, pretty quickly up the ranks of false demon slayers. And, well, she's taken no prisoners. Now, Catherine does not care that she's grossly unqualified and she has no shame. She'll pretty much do anything to advance her theater career. And today she's going to, well, I can hardly say it, she's going to pretend to cast out a demon from a child. Ugh, roll the clip, I guess. God is freeing you right now. I break every generational curse and I declare every spirit tormenting you both, every spirit of witchcraft, I declare must leave you both on three in Jesus' name. One, 
two, three. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Well, how about you folks? You think uh, you think this was real? You think that looked real? Yeah, either did I. You know, I pointed this out in the past while exposing all the false prophets and all the demon slayers. And friends, this is theater. It's nothing more than theater. Catherine, you know, she's on a literal stage performing. And she's not particularly talented, but she does have a knack for working the crowd into an emotional frenzy. They so bad, they're so desperate to believe that they all have demons because that's what Catherine teaches them. To include, of course, generational curses. Excuse me. And so uh, she convinces them that, well, she's the only one that can break those generational curses, cast out those demons and set them free. And here she's got children involved. What does that say? That tells you that she will go to any extent to continue her manipulation, her evil agenda. That's what she's doing here, even to the point of bringing children into it. It's just simply, oh, it's despicable. And let me show you one more thing here. Get a load of the Jumbotron at the back of this stage. Catherine is going to make sure that everyone in the audience can see what she's doing up close. And it certainly does add a certain amount of, I guess, well, it's more effective, right? So, again, theater, multiple cameras, the soft music, the dark setting, it's all designed to move your emotions. And again, you've got an absolute packed venue of people who want to get close to their favorite rock star. She's a rock star. So it's absolutely terrible. And here's the thing, lest she repent, lest Catherine repents for all of this absolute unbiblical nonsense, she is in for a terrifying judgment day where she will stand before a holy God and give an account for all of this unbiblical theatrics. And it's just very sad. So certainly pray for the people who just seem so willing to run into this delusion. Pray that God would awaken them. And pray that Catherine would repent because all of this, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. She is antithetical to the gospel. There is no gospel here that she preaches. She says a lot of praise Jesuses, but again, this is just an example of somebody who gives Jesus lip service, but her heart is far from the truth. There's no death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ here. She's not getting anybody saved. She mocks Jesus Christ. And, you know, I was thinking about this, too. She almost needs to be exposed weekly. I'm thinking about putting a permanent, uh, I guess, segment every week exposing her because she is that dangerous and she's not slowing down. In any case, we'll wrap things up for this segment and let's move on to our final segment. OK, well, rounding off the show today is none other than the queen of torture, anguish and intensified pain. Sister Celestial, everybody. Yes, absolutely. We've got a quick clip for you here today. Now, Celestial, as some of you know, well, she hates people. She hates America, and she certainly hates me. For those of you that don't know, she recently called down death upon me. And I have to tell you that, well, I felt some fear when she did that. Are you serious? Okay, no. No, I didn't. I actually didn't. I'm just kidding. Uh, but Celestial wants to think that uh, her detractors fear her, but we don't. We sort of just laugh. And, it, you know, I'm not trying to be mean, but it's so ridiculous. This woman is absolutely ridiculous. Celestial thinks that she can use God as her own personal weapon of torture, and she often speaks that torture in her videos. And today is no different. We're going to document one such clip here today. So let's go ahead and roll that clip, Becky. 
The reason God hasn't started naming names is because God has to get rid of all the trash that's sitting on all the available seats right now. Leadership seats in the body of Christ worldwide are very few. When you have people like John Anosike sitting in a seat, when you have people like Chris Oyakilome sitting in a seat, when you have people like Benny Hinn, T.D. Jakes, and Marcus Rogers, and Tiffany Montgomery sitting in seats, there has to be a deep clean with a 10 billion watt steamer. With a 10 billion watt steamer. The chairs not only have to be vacated, they need to be steamed in the natural and then washed with the blood of Jesus Christ before the new breed that I've been prophesying here for years can come in. There's a completely new breed that are not coming to sit in these defiled thrones. God has to clear them out before he will put new souls in. So when you're perpetrating in the body of Christ, that you are one of those who sits in these seats when you're not. It's very dangerous because when that steamer starts steaming, it's going to be very painful. We all know that steam is the worst type of hot water there is because it's concentrated and it's deadly. All right, so do you think God said that he would use a 10 billion watt steamer to inflict maximum pain upon the trash sitting in these seats, as she put it? I think God said that. Of course not. You know who said it? Celestial said it. By the way, her real name is Esther. So why would she speak such things? Well, again, it's because she hates people. Her hate is unprecedented. And certainly she proves that she is unmerciful. She doesn't pray for her enemies as Jesus instructed us to do. She calls down death. She calls down pain. Pain. That hate and anger that Celestial carries for her fellow humans is so intense that I have no doubt she sits around and thinks up different forms of painful torture that if she had the opportunity, certainly she would inflict this upon her perceived enemies. It's very disturbing. And so there you have it. We want to document this. We want to pray for those who are caught up in the delusion of following her because she does not preach the gospel. She does not care if people are saved. She only gives prophecies on celebrities and again, her perceived enemies. So no gospel preached, no one's getting saved by watching this, well, this imposter. So, all right, well, that's it. She's very cruel. That concludes this particular segment and yeah, we're done. All right, everyone. Well, that's going to do it for this 70th episode of Friday Fruit Clips. Again, thank you for stopping by. Always, I say this every week, I would ask to pray for those who are caught up in the delusion of following these false prophets and false teachers. Pray that God would awaken them and bring them out of these cults and back into the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Also, pray for the false prophets. Pray that they would shut down their fake ministries, and that they also would repent and come to Jesus Christ in truth and sincerity. And I thank you. Now, if you want to support my ministry, you certainly can. Right down in the description box, there's a couple of ways you can, including Patreon. And if you do consider that, I sincerely thank you. And there you have it. So. Well, my staff is at the door, and we're getting ready to get out of here, too. They're kind of anxious. We are going to a fish fry over in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And, boy, we're excited. The place is supposed to be jumping. And so the wife's here, and we're getting ready to get out of here. So, well, Becky says the credits are ready, so don't forget to watch the credits here. And I'm going to go ahead and shut the lights off and hit the alarm. And there we go. Now, as I depart, as always, I want to leave you with this very important piece of advice. And that is to remember to stay fruity. All right, you guys, we'll see you next week. God bless and take care. Watch this.